trade for a little throwback grit and grind? Will Pat Bev be a perfect fit? What about LeBron and Russ? The big picture in Lakerland will put the puzzle pieces together. And the king of NBA Twitter is here. That's right, King Josiah. All that and more, so get your Twitter fingers ready because the jump starts now. Welcome indeed to The Jump. Joining me today in studio, we have NBA champ Richard Jefferson, NBA reporter Malika Andrews, and from Houston, it is the 2008 champ, Kendrick Perkins. Aww. Aww. They're all together again. Uh, we're it's all together. so nice. Wait, I'm still this camera? Okay. We have a little we <laughs> we have a little bubble thing going yes. on here, Perk, but team, we won't team bubble. We won't make you feel bad, oh, I promise. Perk's, will. Perk's got right. a bit of a bubble. <laughs> no, 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 it's perfectly fine, Rachel. I just feel sorry for you and Malik. I really feel sorry for y'all lost having to be sitting next to Squidward. That, that, that might go. be the I'm first time me and Perk are going to agree no, on something no, today. We're going to agree first on that today. We, we, appre- we appreciate your support, Perk. I want to start with the trade first reported by Woj. The Clippers dealing Patrick Beverly, Rajon Rondo, Daniel Oturo to Memphis for Eric Bledsoe. Memphis has 16 guaranteed contracts now, so they will be open to trade for some of the players returning in this deal. The cl- trade saves the Clippers $30 million in luxury tax, also creates that 8.3 $3 million dollar traded player exception so they have a year to use that Richard what are your takeaways from this deal well I think the Clippers obviously saved a ton of money and they put themselves in a position they put themselves in a position to do something later down the line you know there's always those opportunities whether someone's unhappy or this and so if you have a little bit more flexibility especially that trade exception that's what the Clippers are looking at. You're, this is also a year without Kawhi. That's what it's looking like. So why carry that extra thirty million when you know the chances of your of winning a championship without one of the best players in the league is pretty slim? So I, I like the move. Absolutely, and I had a chance to speak with Eric Bledsoe mm-hmm. yesterday, and he's excited about this move to go back to say, where he so, right? <laughs> right? He has a chance to have a, a look at winning. I know that Kawhi Leonard isn't actually going to be there for who knows how long of the season. That hurts their chances quite a bit, but from going in a New Orleans situation where it was really about mentorship, where it was really about figuring out what that team was about, to a team that has aspirations to win. Mm-hmm. That was a big piece of this puzzle for him, as well as who doesn't like to be back in sunny California, baby. And then, yeah, like you said, the Grizzlies, there's still some pieces. I expect another shoe to fall, as Adrian Wojnarowski reported with this deal. You know what? I actually love this for Eric Blesso. I think, Mm. you know, over the past couple years, he hasn't, you know, got the fair shake. Things that work well in Milwaukee for him and things that work out well in New Orleans for him. But I think going with the Clippers with Ty Lue, uh, being under Ty Lue wing, Ty Lue is going to put Eric Blesso in the best position possible to be successful. Now, when I'm looking at the Memphis Grizzlies, I actually think that they did pretty good in this trade. Mm. You acquire a guy like Patrick Beverly that you know is going to bring that tenacity, bring that type of leadership, that grind mentality that the that Tony Allen and Zach Randolph and Marcus Gasol established way before John Morant got there. We know that the, uh, in Memphis, it's a hostile environment. I think it's a perfect fit for Pat Bell if they decide to keep him, along with Rajon Rondo. If, they, if Rondo wants to stay in Memphis, I don't blame him. You know, he could become a, a huge uh, uh, mentor to, to John Morant for his, his success, for his being one of the best floor generals to ever play the game in my eyes. Now he could mentor John Morant on how to do certain things, how to be a leader on and off the court. So I look at both sides, and I think both sides won in this deal. Yeah, it's nice. You kind of feel like a lot of the players won also with Eric Bledsoe. It's tough when you get dealt off a team that goes on to win a championship, right? I mean, you start to feel like, <laughs> did they win it without me for a reason? Drew Holiday, yeah. obviously, such a huge part of that Don't title, the way that exchange was. It happened to me three or four Richard, times. Richard, 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 the bulk of the regular season and certainly his injury history is to be more careful and be on the more conservative side but he could be back for the playoffs and this is a team that has shown this past postseason that they can roll with the punches they have a veteran presence on them and we'll just have to see how it happens i don't think memphis knows yet which pieces they are going to keep 
I think it will depend on the offers they get in the coming weeks. I want to move on to Summer League, though, guys. Yeah. Arms raised for the Battle of Los Angeles. Well, with Kawhi Leonard recovering from surgery. It doesn't feel like that's necessarily the case anymore, especially with Russell Westbrook being added to the Lakers. However, the Clippers made a move. They acquired Eric Bledsoe. They sent Rajon Rondo and Pat Beverly to the Grizzlies to get Bledsoe. Do you think that makes them a better team after this move? I believe if Kawhi Leonard is healthy, it makes them a better team. Um, it's a fringe move in theory if they're not going to get all NBA caliber Kawhi. And hopefully he's able to recover from his injury and able to play a lot of games this year. But this is a classic example of veteran contracts moving around and adjusting to your role as you get older. Because a couple of seasons ago, Patrick Beverly was the starting point guard of the Los Angeles Clippers, right? Now mm -hmm. he's going to go to Memphis. That's John Morant's job. Dylan Brooks, who you know I really like, having those three on the floor, in particular the latter two, they're going to be locking down defensively. So now Pat Bev in a new role, a reduced role, but still defensively he's going to be able to have an impact. I like it for him a lot. And Eric Blesso made some plays when he was in L.A. He wasn't necessarily the guy that could play alongside Zion because – He's not necessarily a shooter. And so he's been to a couple of teams. I like it for the Clippers. I like it for the Grizzlies, who I'll play expectations this season. Jalen Rose, the expectations are high for the number one overall pick, Cade Cunningham. Our traded player exception that they will have a year to lose. Max Kellerman. Uh, did the Clippers improve? They did. And this is a good trade for the Clippers. You know how I say you don't want to trade, you know, break a dollar into four quarters in the NBA, but you want to turn four quarters into a dollar? Mm -hmm. This is more like two quarters into a 50 cent piece. Uh, you know, Eric Bledsoe can attack the basket. You know, you give up Patrick Beverly, he's a defender. Rondo, high basketball IQ, but Rondo's getting long in the tooth. Like, he really has been in decline. And we saw it even like playoff Rondo didn't. When playoff Rondo doesn't show up, that tells you he's just getting older. And Patrick Beverly was never a dynamic offensive player, but he could play some defense and, you know, give you that fighting spirit. Well, Bledsoe does the same thing. He can do defensively and even maybe be more disruptive defensively sometimes uh, based on his athletic ability um, than a guy, you know, like than what they've lost. And meantime, he's a player who can get to the basket and score. And they have shooting on the team. So Bledsoe's not a great shooter, but it's not as much of an issue. In fact, the spacing may even help him attacking the basket. This is an imp the, the Clippers just got better because they got the best player in the deal. Max, I disagree with you. It's not that I. It's not that I'm saying that Patrick Beverly is better than Eric Bledsoe because I'm not. Um, and I like Eric Bledsoe. He's not a scrub. He can play really strong as well, and he can put some points up. And I get that point. So, technically speaking, you're right about him being a better player. But I got to tell you, I'd rather have Patrick Beverly come postseason. And last time I checked, the Clippers are trying to win a championship. This is what it is. Uh, the Los Angeles Clippers, a legitimate argument could be made, should be standing here today as NBA champions. Uh, if Kawhi Leonard had gone down near the end of the Utah series, a lot of people believe the Clippers would have beaten the Phoenix Suns. And I'm not ruling that out. Not with Kawhi and Paul George playing the way that he was playing. With Kawhi averaging 30 on 57% shooting from the field and 39% from deep point range before he went down. But then when you take into account you know, the energizer bunny that Patrick Beverly was, his ability to defend, and he actually was hitting uh, some key, not in abundance, but he was hitting some key pivotal shots. End of the Utah series, obviously a couple of games against Phoenix. Uh, I just look at it from the standpoint that being the professional Hall of Fame pest that he is, uh, somebody that doesn't just goes out there and plays, but really, really tries to get into your head. I don't see that in Eric Bledsoe. I see a guy that just goes out there and plays. Plays hard. He doesn't cheat you. He's got game. He can play. But he's not somebody that's an energizer bunny that provides that kind of spark. And I think that come postseason time, particularly when you look at the Western Conference, I think those kind of intangibles are things that you need to get you over the hump. 
And I don't see that being Eric Bledsoe, which is why he was going from Milwaukee and why they had no problems 